Thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. It's been a while, so I'm happy to be back at it. We have some exciting stuff coming up in the surround music world, including Lorena McKinnett's The Visit has just been released on Blu-ray in 5.1 and Atmos. It's in this room, and I plan to sit and listen and review it soon. For those asking, yes, I am going to be reviewing the Charisma Years box set by Vandegraaff Generator. I'm just trying to give the proper time to sit and absorb the copious material, including four albums in 5.1, mixed by Stephen W. Taylor, with whom I've had some correspondence, and I hope to get some further insights into uh, how he achieved four 5.1 mixes of some classic Van de Graaff Generator material. We have the Beatles' Let It Be Deluxe coming out on Friday. Again, I believe 5.1 and Atmos. It's on Blu-ray in the big book set, and it's also evidently going to be on streaming services like Apple Music and Tidal in sort of a lossy Atmos rendition. So you do have some options, and we'll get to all that when it comes out. But for now, given that fall is upon us and Halloween's approaching, I'm devouring Halloween movies and Halloween music like crazy, and somebody in another review recently noticed Tubular Bells, the quad super audio CD up on my wall, and remarked that uh, he wasn't aware that anyone else in the world was interested in Tubular Bells. So I figured it was just the right time to shoot a quick, fun video about the various incarnations of Tubular Bells in surround, at least that I'm aware of. So here we go. First of all, let's head over to Quadraphonic Quad. You can see that there have been a variety of releases over the years. Back in the day, there was a Quad LP. It may have been on its own, but it certainly was included in the box set called Boxed. Some people report this to be fake Quad, and so it may be different than the Super Audio CD, which is sourced from the original Quad Master. Mixed into quad by recording engineer and mixing engineer Phil Newell. Included in this little LP sleeve replica, you get an essay from Simon Hayworth. And you get a write-up from Phil Newell, which is elucidating. You get some notes in Japanese and a little poster with the tubular bell on it. From Phil Newell's Right up, we learn that Mike Oldfield did not ever necessarily approve this quad mix. He listened to it a time or two and just kind of shook his head and walked out. So he uh, apparently wasn't a fan of turning his album into surround at the time. And here's the Super Audio CD. And you get an OB strip if you... Uh, find this SACD. I'm not sure it was ever released outside of Japan. Took me a while to find it affordably. But if you are interested in the original recording, the original orchestration mixed into quad by an engineer who was there on the ground at the time, but not necessarily approved by Mike Oldfield, then you're going to want to track down this SACD. It is as far as I know, the only optical version of the original Quad Master. Again, the tubular bells that came in the boxed set may be a fake Quad upmix. Okay? Then, moving forward, in 2003, I believe, for the 30th anniversary, Mike Oldfield decided he needed to re-record the entire opus. They had access to the 16-channel master tapes, individual tracks, and they used that to reference how Mike played his original parts to map some timing, map some time signatures, and to get a starting point. But this is entirely re-recorded, including a different narrator. Is this the version with John Cleese? Anyway, um, I appreciate this version because it features advanced resolution, MLP, DVD audio, 5.1, so it's not lossy. It really sonically sounds pretty great to my ears, and I don't mind a bit that the material was re-recorded. 
it sounds fine to me. I don't have a tremendous amount of nostalgia for the original version, though some people do. Though I gotta say, the Quad SACD and the 2003 DVD audio rank pretty highly as far as quadphonicquad.com voters are concerned. Alright, so I happen to really like it. And then, sometime around 2009, Tubular Bells was released in, I think, a big box set with LPs, CDs, a DVD, a big book, and it may have looked something like this, if my research is correct. But this is the booklet from the 2010, <laughs> much smaller format, uh, deluxe edition, and it nixes the LPs and just focuses on two CDs, one DVD. In any case, the DVD is kind of an oddball. You don't get any stereo mixes on it. It is tubular bells, parts one and two, plus this thing called Mike's single, and um, Sailor's hornpipe with like a voiceover. All of those in 5.1, and uh, they are remixed into 5.1 by Mike Oldfield himself. Some people like what he's done here, some people don't. Some people feel that in various passages, percussion has been emphasized as opposed to melody and stuff of that sort. Uh, but the thing that I find most odd is that the only format, the only soundtrack that this uh, features on the DVD is Dolby Digital. Super lossy, I think it's like 448, super lossy, uh, Dolby Digital. And they could have at least put DTS, you know, 4824, or extended DTS, 9624, or, you know, shoot for the moon and go MLP like they did on the 2003 version. But um, we only get lossy Dolby Digital. It is the original parts, though some claim that there's been some re-recording because it just doesn't play back like they're used to. That could just be due to different mixing choices. Or there could have been things that were buried in the original or muted and Mike decided to, you know, make them audible finally. It's hard to say. But uh, one thing that I appreciate about this 2010 edition is you do get a view of the master tapes. I always love that. I always love that. You'll always get points. And then the tape box. You'll always get points for that. And then, like, this kind of <laughs> evocative image uh, original advertisement for Virgin Records. So I guess Tubular Bells basically was the very first record on Virgin Records. Is that true? Richard Branson uh, basically set Mike up at a manor, had all kinds of access to spacious rooms, could lay out his instruments, set up recording, have some quiet, have some space. Um, allowed him to basically just create his brainchild, Tubular Bells, which was originally called Opus One, and under pressure, he finally named it Tubular Bells. And, man, what more is there to say? So we have a Super Audio CD of the original Quadmaster, we have a DVD audio of 2003 re-recording, and we have a DVD video of Mike Oldfield's 5.1 remix of the original recording. And let me see. Of the three, my favorite is the 2003 re recording. Again, I don't have nostalgia for the original, and I think it sounds the best. Next up for me would be the Quad Master on Super Audio CD because it is the original recording and it was mixed by an engineer on the ground and it wasn't approved by Mike, and since he does tend to exercise a considerable amount of control <laughs> over his remixes, I just find that, you know, bit of rebellion to be kind of fascinating. And it is, in my opinion, a, a good listen in its own right. And then, of course, you can try to pick up Boxed if you have uh, the proper analog gear to do so. I hope you have had a good time watching this video. Correct me in the comments below for any mistakes I made. There's probably at least one.
Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, share this video, do all the things that get this channel out to more people, and thus the love of surround music out to more people, uh, just vitalize the health of this hobby that so many of us love so much. I appreciate your support with viewing and with uh, just encouraging me. I always love uh, interacting with you in the comments and over on Facebook and on Quadraphonic Quad. And uh, again, we have some exciting stuff coming up, so be ready for Let It Be by The Beatles, The Charisma Years, and uh, The Visit, among other things. <laughs> I tend to be a little disorganized and just fly by the seat of my pants, so who knows what's coming next. All right, probably uh, Let It Be, all right? I have a feeling I'll have a hard time avoiding reviewing that one. All right, so I appreciate you, and until next time, live life in surround.